do you think it's you know, do you think it would be helpful to kind of give some examples of alternative approaches besides science that can be used to effectively challenge beliefs I mean, we can take the belief in, in god if we want to carry on down that road mm. but actually kind yeah. of how would we begin to then employ philosophical or other methods that aren't necessarily strictly scientific to begin to challenge those kind of concepts yeah there's a lot well, there is a lot you can do from the comfort of your armchair um and in fact we've already looked at an example of how you might raise a, an armchair objection to belief in god maybe from the comfort of your armchair you can know there's no god because the very idea of god as an agent that has beliefs and desires an intelligent being designed and created the universe the very, very idea of such a being that is a non-temporal being that creates the temporal universe doesn't make any sense um if it doesn't make any sense then we can rule out that god in the same way that we can rule out around square residing in the jungles of peru uh you know it's not there uh you can know that from the comfort of your armchair just by having to think about it so maybe we can do that for god we could rule out god in that non science if that's not i take it that's not science what i'm doing now it's because it's armchair work it's non-empirical having said that though um when i talked to richard dawkins about uh, this issue he expanded the notion of science to include all rational thought basically uh and so what so what I just did there, running an argument against God from the comfort of my armchair without doing any empirical work at all, he counts that as science. Um, so if you have a if you have a, a sufficiently sort of elastic concept of science that includes all of maths and logical reasoning and all of that, you know, the whole thing, all rational inquiry, um, then yeah, okay, so maybe scientism begins to look a bit more plausible. Um, but that's not normally how people understand science. I mean, on my understanding, I would normally understand science um, as involving an application of the scientific method or something like it. So it's a comparatively recent discovery science, um, you know, about five hundred years old or something like that. And since we did, since we, um, since we produced science, we have seen huge leaps in our understanding of the world around us. It's an amazing tool, science, the scientific method. But I do think that there are questions that science, that kind of methodology, um, can't can't answer. In philosophy, I think. Um, I mean, if maybe I'll just stop there. But if you wanted another example, I could give I could give you an example, a philosophical example. I mean, sure. If you've got one ready, why why not? Okay. Well, one thing you can, um, one thing you might be able to do. Um, I mean, I think that the mind body problem is an armchair conceptual problem uh i don't think it's a scientific problem the philosophical puzzle of how you get this private phenomenal world of conscious experience and all its technicolor glory how you get this from the activity of that walnut shaped lump of matter between my ears i mean how does that work how is that even possible um i think that on the face of it that is a that's essentially it's a conceptual problem that they're just it's like trying to build numbers out of lego or something like it's, it's still like you're it's the, it's the wrong kind of stuff you're never going to get consciousness by gluing bits of matter together um and um there's, there seems to be something about consciousness that means that it's going to be in principle impossible ever to give an account of how um, a purely material object could give rise to it or material system could give rise to it. And then there are various attempts to sharpen that armchair intuition up into an armchair argument. So Descartes got a couple of arguments and then there are arguments about, you know, Mary and the black and white room and so on. Um, if you're not familiar with that, there's Mary is raised in a black and white environment from birth, never experiences colour, but learns everything there is to know about human beings and what goes on inside them when they have colour experiences. Um, so she fully understands all of the facts, has full knowledge of all of the physical facts, so far as colour perception is concerned, but then she's shown a red object and now she learns something new, what it's like to experience red. And this is a new fact that she's now become aware of, the what it's likeness. Uh, that she didn't 
had access to previously. So there are then more facts than just the physical facts and no account uh, of the what it's likeness of conscious experience is ever going to be possible if you focus only on what's um, available to science, those external um, physical, physical facts. So there are those kind of arguments. And it seems to me that um, um, what we seem to have there is a kind of conceptual obstacle to minds being brains, but it may be that there isn't really a conceptual obstacle at all. It's just the illusion of one. And I suspect actually that's true. But it, it seems to me that if you want to solve the mind-body problem, you need to do conceptual armchair work. It's not a scientific problem. Uh, a, a, an interesting scientific problem is how you build a machine that's capable of interacting with the, the, its environment exactly like a human being and saying the kind of things that human being does. I mean, that, that's a technical challenge. Um, yeah, science, science can do that. Maybe you can solve how to do that. But the, the philosophical puzzle of how you build technicolor phenomenology out of, you know, the what it's likeness out of a, a pure physical goings on, um, that puzzle, I think, is a conceptual puzzle and it will require a conceptual solution if indeed it can be solved. If you enjoyed this clip, then head on over to Locals to access the full conversation right now. Supporters can access the video version and everyone can access the audio only version of the conversation. I'll see you over there.